Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to worship. I am Pastor Maggie Westby, and I'm so grateful to be worshiping with all of you who are here today. And for those of you watching online, welcome. An announcement before we begin. It is with deep sorrow and hope in the resurrection that I share the passing of our sister, Pat Paisky. Her funeral will be at St. John, but the date is yet to be determined. I will share more when I know more. We will continue to hold Pat's family in our prayers later in the service. Since today is the first Sunday in March, we will recognize all St. John members who have a birthday in March. A very happy birthday this month goes out to Otis Fitzke, Riley Levake, Matt Rowe, Zachary Sulin, Jennifer Bronstetter, Tyler Eno, Logan Heil, Lynn Brookberger, Ryan Soybert, Ron Moots, Emily Moots, Carol Prochnow, Ashley Bungie, Leiloni Norman, Nick Olke, Mariah Marcourt, Mason Melke, Stephen Erdman, Isaac Olke, Callie Barr, Heather Gallenberg, Kate Sari, Don Volker, Jan Miller, Linda Grudzinski, Austin Walter, Dan Hine, Will Rode, Stacy Linsmeyer, Trey Bookberger, Clifford Knapp, Sarah Stubbe, Barbara Jo Kopp, Marlene Barr, Brenda Knudsen, Nicole Woodman Z, Benjamin Grunenberg, Sierra Bornheimer, Mike Stubbe, Sawyer Knight, Michael Levate, Betty Hainish, Jason Grunberg, James Haroldson, Bruce Redant, and Kyle Stubbe. If I missed any birthdays, please let me know. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for birthdays, for celebrating those who have traveled another year around the sun this March. We ask that you bless each of them on their birthday and all days. Fill them with your love and joy, for each of them is precious in your sight, your child, and your beloved. In Christ we pray. Amen. Also today, we will pray for our sister congregation in Reet Pan, Africa. Let us pray for them. Abiding God, we give you thanks for our sister congregation. May you continue to provide your ever-loving presence with them. Provide each person with peace, comfort, love, and rest, and the resources that they need. May you continue to bless their ministry and all whom they come in contact with. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I now invite you all to settle in, to notice your breath, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 121. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow you Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy and forgives you in Christ's name. 
and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you are our helper and our shade and our protector. You are able to give the life to the dead, to call into being things that do not exist. We trust in your power to make all things new, to keep us in sunlight and moonlight, along rocky paths and pathways unknown, until all our going and comings bring us at last to your kingdom, promised in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite you to sing our opening hymn, The Glory of These Forty Days, number 320. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. The first reading is from the 12th chapter of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 121 responsively. <clears throat> I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot slip, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep you safe. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. Return to the God, for he is gracious and merciful. 
merciful to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, nor where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and children can come forward. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Was it kind of foggy when you came in this morning? No. It was foggy really early this morning when I came in, and it was so cool. It was super thick fog, which was a little scary when you're driving. Why do you think it might be scary to drive in a thick fog? Yes, you might go in the ditch. Yes. And I think it's mainly because you can't really see too far in front of you, right? So in the Bible, when the Bible was written and the stories were told back in Jesus' time, people always associated nighttime with when you can't see very well as times that are scary. So can you guys close your eyes? Maybe cover them so it makes it a little bit darker. And then you can take off your hands and open your eyes. And you can see the light. And that is Jesus Christ. He became the light of the world. So even when it's dark, Jesus became the light of the world to give each of you something very special. His light that lives inside of you. Can you feel that inside of you? Put your hands on your heart. So this is another word we like to say. It's called courage. And it comes from God. Because God gives you courage to get through the scary times, through the fog, maybe when you can't see, or the night, or... Other things you might be scared of, what are some things you guys are scared of? Anyone brave enough to share? Yes, it is scary to sleep alone sometimes. I agree. What about you? My dad. <laughs> your, 
<laughs> you're scared of your dad. <laughs> well, I'm sure your dad loves you very much. <laughs> Any other fears anyone wants to share? But we remember, even in our fears, who do we have with us? Yes, we have God with us right inside of you. They're giving you courage to do, give you strength to get through. Should we pray and give thanks for that? All right, let us pray. Loving God, thank you for Jesus, for giving us courage. Help us to live into your strength and share your strength with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being brave and having courage for coming up. You can head back. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my joy. Amen. I invite you all to close your eyes as you are comfortable. And if you can, imagine an aerial view of our church. Now try as best as you can to pan up even more, revealing all of Wassa. And higher still to see the entire state of Wisconsin. And higher still to see all of North America. And higher still to the planet Earth. Embrace this image of Earth, silently floating in the vacuum of space. The beautiful greens and blues swirl around the globe, revealing mil millions of pathways, both physical paths and pathways through time. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the end, by paths never taken and through perils unknown. Give us good courage, not knowing where we go, to know that your hand is leading us wherever we might go. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to open your eyes whenever you feel comfortable. May each of you find good courage this week. May courage shine into you, your spirit. And may courage be the strongest when you need it the most. Because the world, as beautiful as it is, can also be difficult and exhausting. And the world, as lovely as it is, can also be filled with sadness, destruction, and fear. Hardships that our faith elders knew far too well. And so they cultivated sacred words and practices to fill themselves with good courage. They lifted up their eyes to the hills, believing that their help comes from the Lord creator of heaven and earth. They believed that God was the shade at their right hand and that God was leading them, watching over their comings and goings. And today's gospel was about the comings and goings of one man who sought out Jesus. A man who asked hard questions and a man who spoke up when he didn't understand something. A man whose conversations brought forth one of the most popular and beautiful Bible verses of all time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And so for that, I say thank you, Nicodemus. And I would also like to say thank you to Nicodemus because through his coming and going, he showed us that it is okay even when we are afraid. 
and that even in our fears, we can seek out and we can find Jesus. Now, if you're wondering if you missed something in the gospel reading about Nicodemus's fears, you are not alone. As it is not quite evident to us today, because it was for the original hearers of the gospel. This gospel came from a time in our history when society understood light and dark and day and night in a very specific way. This is especially true in the Gospel of John, as the Gospel of John really embraces the light-dark, day-night imagery, revealing another level of meaning. For example, the original hearers would have had a different understanding of the Gospel right from the get-go, as a unique context is formed in the very first two sentences, where it reads, Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night. Night implies that Nicodemus was afraid, and the fact that he was a Pharisee further reveals that he was specifically scared to be seen with Jesus. Because if he was caught with Jesus by other Pharisees, he would be persecuted. And yet, he found the courage to go even if it was veiled in the darkness of night. Once he finds Jesus, as we all heard, he engaged in a not-so-smooth and somewhat confusing conversation, a conversation that is really getting at the importance of baptism and faith, without ever mentioning the word baptism. Now, perhaps Jesus approaches this conversation this way, without using the term baptism, to show that there are multiple pathways to talk about baptism, inviting curiosity, wonder, and love into the night. Further, Jesus is embodying this love by physically being present with Nicodemus, by answering his questions and sharing the magnitude of God's love for the world. The fact that this conversation takes place at night shows that the light of the world still meets us in the night. Words that were similarly echoed from our psalmist today. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Why? Because God is there. God is there despite your fears and in the midst of of your fears. Christ is there in the darkness, in the things that you do not know, in the things you cannot see, and in the mystery of life. And Jesus brings this mystery to our attention by saying, the wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Revealing to us that through baptism, we are born into God's holy mystery. Allowing God to lead us on pathways unknown. Pathways that we have yet to venture into as time pushes out in front of us. A place where God not only watches over your comings and goings, but a place where God is already at. Providing you with courage to embrace the unknown and courage to embrace even what is known. So for whatever you have going on this week, this month, this year, and throughout your lifetime, May each one of you find good courage. And may you also find the courage to be there for others in need, inviting others to lift up their eyes to the hills while sharing that God is there in the midst of all of our ventures. And so I would like to lift up the prayer of good courage once more. Oh God, you have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the end, 
by paths never taken and through perils unknown. Give us good courage, not knowing where we go, to know that your hand is leading us wherever we might go. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue worship by singing our hymn of the day, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, number 800. Please stand as you are able to profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Creator God, breathe new life into our planetary home. Guide the work of researchers, scientists, and for those who teach us how to love your earth. Inspire in us new and creative ways to care for the natural world, to lessen our environmental impact, and to be good stewards of your creation. God of grace, abiding God, draw near to all who live with mental illness, depression, or addiction, and accompany them in healing and recovery. Hear the cries of those who look to you in their distress and provide them with relief, proper resources, comfort, and love. 
God of grace, loving God, we thank you for keeping our lives in your care and protection, and we pray to feel your presence in our midst. Protect not only us and those we love, but also the whole wide world you so love. In places of war, bring peace. In places beset by natural disaster, bring calm and restoration. And in places where hope has grown tired and thin, lift our eyes to the hills, so that we may see hope beyond hope that lives only in you, God of grace. Mothering God, guide our pathways and bring us good courage. Encourage us to find ways to care for others as you meet us in all of our ventures and in the sunlight, the moonlight, and the twilight. God of grace, eternal God, we lift up Fritz and Mike and all who are mourning the loss of Pat. Provide your comfort and peace. May all find peace knowing that Pat is with you and that you are holding her in your loving embrace for nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. God of grace, healing God, provide relief and healing to all who are sick, inspire us to deepen our care and concern for one another. Today we especially pray for Pat Plunkett, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into the fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace, Nurturing God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for all the members of St. John. May you unveil your will to each of them in ways that are life-giving and filled with your love. We also lift up this week's prayer ministry. Josh Hine, Kelly Rosenau, Renner Stubbe, Barb Paulson, Chad Walter, Emma Nowak, Macy Landwehr, Madison Hine, Leopold Schiller, Patricia Spangler, Nicole Knight, Mason Milkey, Dwayne Askew, Robin Hine, Carol Prochnow, Alex Zahn, Katie Fitzke, Sarah Stubbe, Loretta Nolan, Sheila Gums, Randy Knapp, James Levake, Kylie Pashok, Eleanor Grunenborg, and Nicholas Olke. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share the peace however you feel comfortable. We continue with our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, receive these and all of our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Before we begin, would anybody like prepackaged communion? If so, please raise your hand and an usher can bring it around for you. And please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of the angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me gathered into one by the holy spirit let us pray how jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For anyone taking prepackaged communion, I invite you to open the wafer. And to hear these words, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. I now invite you to open the juice side and to hear these words, taste and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. For those wanting to partake in continuous communion, we'll form one line Following the ushers, you'll receive the bread from me and the wine or the juice on your corresponding sides. There are gluten-free wafers available upon request. Now is the time for you to come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness and our meal to sustain us this Lent and throughout life. I now invite the communion assistants to come forward to help with the meal.
Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and care for the world with your love in our hearts. Amen. For announcements, today is the last day to purchase lilies, so if you would like to do so, please do so today. There are, um, there are sheets in the narthex if you do not have one in your bulletin. The March newsletter is also available in the narthex. They are in the wooden file holder on the wall next to the mailboxes. The newsletters are in the very top file, and right below it are the calendars and the assisting and worship schedules. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. As you go out and come in, may God keep you by sunlight, moonlight, and twilight. May Christ encompass you with love, peace, and hope. And may the Holy Spirit empower you with life anew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us sing our sending song, O Living Bread from Heaven, number 542. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.